Blast off. <clears throat> Say hi, Ruben. Hello. Introduce us. Uh, we're looking at uh, microtubules. <laughs> yeah, um, we're doing um, life science in a nutshell. So um, we have we are doing the cytoskeleton and its parts. Um, so in this pictures we're here, we're looking at microtubules and their cross section, um, and gel fixation um, of cells. So we were learning about microtubules. So here, read this. One. Microtubules are hollow cylinders about 20 nm in diameter, lumen approximately 15 nm in diameter, most commonly compri comprising 13 protofilaments that in turn are polymers of alpha and beta tubulin. They have a very dynamic behavior binding GTP for polymerizations. They are commonly organized by the central zone. In nine triplet sets, star-shaped, they form the centrioles, and in nine doublets oriented, about two additional microtubules. Wheel shaped, they form cilia and flagella. The latter formation is commonly referred to as a 9 2 arrangement, wherein each doublet is connected to another by the protein dynein, as both flagella and cilia are structured components of the cell. And are maintained by microtubules. They can be considered part of the cytoskeleton. They are two types of cilia, motile and non-motile cilia. Cilia are short and more numerous than flagella. The motile cilia have a rhythm, rhythm, rhythmic rhythm. I don't really say that Rith rhythmic waving and beating motion compared to the non motile cilia, which receive sensory information for the cell processing. So, yeah, cilia and flagella are both made up of microtubules, and cilia can be either motile or non motile, and they are very short, and there's numerous cilia on the cell <clears throat> they move um, rhythmically they beat they process signals across cells and then dyne <clears throat> protein dynein um, is a protein attaching to microtubules functioning as molecular motor the motion of cilia and flagella is um, created by microtubules sliding past one another requiring atp or energy Microtubules play a key role in um, intracellular transport between cells associated with dynings and kinesins, which are proteins transporting organelles like micro mitochondria or vesicles, so um, controlling movement of uh, these organelles. The um, axoneme of cilia and flagella, the mito mitotic spindle, um, and the synthesis of the cell wall in plants are all um, um, important functions of the microtubule. Um, so this is um, like a, a summary. Um, we'll go in a little more detail after a bit. And then intermediate filaments average not 10 nanometers, about half the size in uh, diameter of microtubules. They're stable, strongly bound, um, more stable than actin filaments, which are the thinnest of all three types of um, cytoskeletal um, filaments. They are heterogeneous constituents, which means there's many different kinds. I believe it said about 70 different kinds of intermediate filaments that make up that could make up the cytoskeleton. Like actin filaments, they function in maintenance of cell shape, bearing tension. 
Um, microtubules, by contrast, resist compression, but um, can also bear tension during mitosis and positioning of centrosome. So um, intermediate filaments organize internal tridimensional structure of cell, anchoring organelles serving as structural component of nuclear lamina. They participate in some cell-cell cell matrix junctions. So um, the matrix is what is inside um, the cell. Nuclear lamina exist in all animals and tissues. So here shown in the picture is the keratin filaments, which are intermediate filaments inside the cells. Okay, so so we got the picture here of the showing the intermediate filament and um nuclear lamina um i looked it up it's um inside the nucleus so nuclear lamina is a dense 30 to 100 nanometer thick fibular fibrillar network inside the nucleus of most cells it is composed of intermediate filaments and membrane associated proteins Besides providing mechanical support, the nuclear lamina regulates important cellular events such as DNA replication and cell division. The nuclear lamina is a structure near the inner surface uh, nuclear membrane and the peripheral chromatin. It is composed of lamins, which are also present in the nuclear interior, and lamin-associated proteins. So that's, that's what that means. The nuclear lamina protein meshwork. It lines the nucleoplasmic surface of the inner nuclear membrane thought to provide framework for organizing. So, so um, keratin, as we saw, was one type of this intermediate filament shown here in the bright red stainage of the cell. Um, and then here, read the keratin. Keratin. Uh, keratin and intermediate filaments in ep ep epithelial cells provide protection for different mechanical stresses the skin may endure. They also provide protection for organs against meta metabolic, oxidative, and chemical stresses, strength strengthening of epithelial cells with these intermediate filaments may reduce cell stress. Uh, intermediate filaments are most commonly known as a support system or scaffolding for the cell and nucleus while also playing a role in some cell functions. In combination with proteins and desmosomes, the intermediate filaments form cell-cell connections and anchor the cell matrix junctions that are used in mess messaging between cells and as well as vital functions of the cell. The connections also allow the cell to communicate through the dysmosome of multiple cells to adjust structures of the tissue based on signals from the cell's environment. So, um, different intermediate filaments include made of vimentins. Vimentin intermediate fil filaments are in general present in mes mesenchymal cells. Made of keratin, um, usually in epithelial cells. Ne neurofilaments of neural cells. Um, lamin, um, giving structural support to nuclear envelope. Desmin, important role in structural and mechanical support of muscle cells. So they're found in different types of cells. Again, intermediate filament subunit examples. Mesenchyme, vimentin, glial fibrillary acidic protein, glial neurofilament proteins, neuronal processes, keratins, epithelial neuro, nuclear lamins are all intermediate filaments. So we're going to take a pause and we're going to continue in the next part. I um, hope this is understandable. But yeah, say bye, Ruben. Bye-bye.